is this week, where I take my favorite shows and I rank them from one to five in a week based off three things. Character development, story arc and plot, what's new? New gadgets, new gizmos, new heroes, new villains. Now, let's get to our shows this week, and they'll be Dragon Ball Super. Ash versus Luke Cage, Supergirl, Supernatural, Legends of Tomorrow, and Walking Dead. Agents was off again. Last week was off due to elections. This week it's off. For who knows whatever reason. Get to Titan number five. Titan number five this week goes to Luke Cage. This week on Luke Cage, I gave it a nine. Okay? I'll tell you why. This week on Luke Cage, we got the bad story of Mama Mabel and Stinky Pete. Which, if you noticed, Mariah and Cottonmouth are, are pretty much like them. Like... Cottonmouth's like Sinky Pete, Mariah's like Mama Mabel, and especially you see that come out in her. And especially we get to see their backstory, and especially the fact that like Cottonmouth killed Stinky Pete, like she made him do it? Like what the fuck was that? Also, at the end of the episode, Mariah kills Cottonmouth, dude, what was that? I mean, I knew she was vindictive, I knew she was on the edge of snapping. And I knew she was upset with Cottonmouth, but seriously, for her to kill him at the end of the episode, and she, like, knocked him, like, it, they're in the penthouse, they're in the club, and she's, and he, she, oh, wow. She hits him, right? And he falls through the glass and then just falls all the way down. And then she goes down there, right? Keep in mind, in this episode, like, Shades has been nudging her. Like, most people are sleeping on Shades, man. He's the one behind the scenes, like, pulling the strings, like, all low-key and shit. And he's kind of been coaxing her, like, yeah, you got to get some nerve. Like, you got to show what you're about and trying to push her in this direction. And finally, she snaps and pushes Cottonmouth, and then he falls off the top story of the club, falls down, and then she goes down there with, like, this mic stand and just... Beats the living hell out of him, just crushes him to death, very Negan style, if you ask me. And, like, whoa! So, all that's going on. Scarf's dead, and, and they're, they're, they're doing that whole thing. They're getting. The craziness in this episode is just, it keeps escalating. And just when you think Cottonmouth. After the last episode got locked up, just when you think, like, you've done your job, you've done what you were supposed to, you got him behind bars, he gets out of jail, and then not more than a week after him being out of the jail, Mariah kills him. So, overall, like I said, a nine, another amazing episode. Like, Luke Cage, from start to this episode, I'm absolutely loving it, and I'm looking forward to seeing where the show's going. So let's get to Titan number... Oh, night number four this week goes to The Flash. With all the fuckery that Barry's been doing with the timeline, somehow he's managed to make this week's episode of The Flash probably one of the best of the season, in my opinion. Number one, we got Dr. Alchemy. More Dr. Alchemy in this episode. Also, while he is dealing with the fuckery of the fact that he wants to be a speedster, but... His powers haven't manifested, and he's dreaming about it, and even Dr. Alchemy's getting in his fucking head and trying to take him over and get him to come over to Dr. Alchemy's sides will give him his powers. So, more and more of Flashpoint is starting to spill over into this timeline. Way to go, Barry! Also, along with this, Barry's tr Barry, Wally, and the team are trying to track down Dr. Alchemy. Okay? And at the end of the episode, they finally track him down, and out of nowhere, Godspeed, Salvatore, the 
God of speed shows up and he's just like this white streak that only Barry can see because he moves so fast. And he puts Barry against the wall because they try to trap Dr. Alchemy. So when they're trying to trap Dr. Alchemy and they think that they've shut him down, like he shows up out of nowhere grabbing Barry. So Dr. Alchemy is getting help. Puts Barry up against the pillar, and this is what happens. I tried to warn you, Barry. I tried to warn every week on Titans. I'm trying to warn you, son. Your colossal fuckery of fucking up the timeline is out of control now, and now the god of speed is on your ass. Maybe you learn to stop messing with the timeline. Seriously. Overall, the episode was a nine. It was probably one of the best episodes of The Flash that we've had all season. Which it's good to see the Flash coming back with a vengeance. So, let's get to type number three. Listen up, pants yet. Gonna be here shortly. I don't know what kind of lying assholes you've been dealing with, but I'm a man of my word. Titan number three this week goes to the Walking Dead. Yes, I am Negan. Yes, I am Negan this week. And if you don't stay tuned next week, I'm going to shut that shit down. No exceptions. Now, <laughs> now let's get to Walking Dead this week. The Walking Dead, uh, another amazing episode. I gave it a 9.5. Uh, it, it was another interesting episode. This week, Negan and the Saviors show up to Alexandria. And they're taking all their guns, they're taking their food, they're taking all their shit, taking half their shit. Okay? Lots of positive things this week. Livia almost died because of fuckboy Spencer. Like, what's up with this guy? This guy is the buddy fucker in the group. And especially at the end of the episode, when he was running his mouth to Rick. I'd have been like, if I was Rick, I'd have been like, motherfucker, you're lucky you're still breathing. Just because I'm Negan's bitch doesn't mean I'm your bitch. And you run your mouth to me again, I'm going to break your fucking jaw. Anyways. So, Negan takes all their guns. Michonne's trying to find herself. She's going out shooting walkers and doing all sorts of shit. And they bring Daryl along as a way to rub it in their face. Fantastic character development on the behalf of not only Rick having to deal with this whole fuckery of Negan and having to deal with it and figure out a way to overcome it. And at one point in the episode, Rick goes to everybody in the church and is like, listen, I'm not in charge anymore. Negan is. So everybody is reeling from the shock that, like, Rick ain't creating a plan. He ain't doing nothing to stop me. So it'll be interesting to see in next week's episode how that fuckery unravels and when Rick is gonna, gonna grab the bull by the horns and say, listen guys, we need to do something about this. I've read it in the comics already. I've already read when it comes and I'm not gonna spoil it for all of you out there, but it's coming. And it's going to be one of the most epic moments in all of The Walking Dead ever. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I'll shut that shit down. No exceptions. Now, let's get to Titan number two. two this week goes to Arrow. Arrow, another amazing episode. This is turning out to be one of my favorite seasons, okay? Green Arrow's back. Like... The villains are really cool. Like, the character development is off the charts. Everyone's thinking that Prometheus is Quentin Lance, but I don't think he is. You know who I think it is? I think it is the district attorney, the new DA, the new district attorney, okay? Pay attention, and, and I'm already calling. So if it happens, you can thank Spike for already calling this. I'm, I think it's him, okay? So in this episode... We get this new vigilante that's going around killing people, doing pretty much what Oliver did in season one. And it's like the team is struggling with this. 
Oliver's struggling with being a mayor, and it, he feels like he's not really making a difference. And especially he feels like, just like every season, like every year he's doing this, every since he's been doing this, is he really making a difference? And especially at one point in the episode, him and his reporter friend have a nice little drink and chat, and she kind of helps work it, help him work through that. In the backstory, Dolph Lundgren, Constantine Kovar, and Oliver have this big fight, and holy shit was that fight amazing. Like, I ain't seen Dolph Lundgren move like that since Rocky IV. And, like, he's not just moving with power, son. He's not just moving with strength. He's moving with speed, too. I was amazed at how tall and as, as long as he is, how fast he was moving. Beat the shit out of him. And come to find out, the Bravo was working with him in the first place. What kind of shit is that? Anyways, in the current story, in the end, they finally get Vigilante co cornered, and they, they get this, this uh, arrow rope wrapped around him, and he releases some explosive, and then he's just gone. You should have unmasked him when you had the chance. That's what I would have done. I'm not Green Arrow, but seriously, that's what I would have done. Overall, like I said, 9.5. More and more character development, not only from the team, but from Oliver, and, and the story is amazing, and especially Thea's helping Quentin to try to get back on track and figure out what the fuck's going on with him. So, with, with all that being said, next week's episode and the crossover coming up, it's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing. So, let's get to the shows that didn't make this cut, didn't make the cut this week, and they'll be... Ash versus the Evil Dead. Now, Ash versus the Evil Dead was mostly about Ash being in an insane asylum after being taken prisoner by Ball last week. Overall, it was an alright episode. It was okay. I gave it a 5. Not really a whole lot of excitement. The next show that didn't make the cut this week was Supernatural. This week, it was about one of their mom, one of Sam and Dean's mom's people that she saved in the past. And the story was about him and how she saved him. Kind of a bland episode. I gave it a six. Not really a whole lot of excitement or anything for the plot or, or any real type of character development. The next show that didn't make the cut this week was Supergirl. Supergirl, the most exciting part of this episode was Parasite. And I've said it for... Ever since the season started, Supergirl started off real strong, but it, it's really starting to take a decline. But we have the crossover coming up, so I have high hopes. The last show that didn't make the cut this week goes to Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow was about the Old West. We had Jonah Hex. Uh, a little bit of character development, a little bit of... of story arc that was good but other than that the only other thing that we got new this week was jonah hex so like i said about supergirl with the crossover coming up it's gonna get intense it's gonna get exciting it's just the last two to three episodes leading up to it it's just a little dry now let's get to our titan of the TV this Dragon Ball Super, another amazing episode. I gave it a 9.5, but there are a few plot holes. There's a few little things that came up in this episode that makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Like, yeah, and I'll get to that in a minute. But in this episode, we finally see the end of Zamas. We also got the fusion. We got the Vegito fusion. And the fight between Vegito and Zamas was amazing. Like, but, apparently there's a time limit now on the fusion earrings. Like, what is that? They're changing things when, you remember from Dragon Ball Z, there was no time limit. They were, they, they split, they unfused while inside of Boo during Dragon Ball Z. And there was no time limit, and nothing was ever mentioned about a time limit, but now in Dragon Ball Super, we get a time limit, okay? That's one of my first qualms. Another exciting part of this episode was Trunks used 
his sword and he created like this spirit bomb sword and just sliced Zamas in half. Just destroy him. Now, here's where the issues come into play. Number one, we did get Vegito. Okay, now you're going to ask yourself, Spike, well, why did you give it number one this week? Why is it the Titan of TV this week? Because it was the most explosive, one of the most epic episodes of Dragon Ball we've ever gotten. But there were some things about the episode that still leave it to my attention. And all the other shows did great this week, except the ones that didn't make the cut. But out of all of them, this was the most exciting. We had the most character development. We had the, the, the finish to the arc. And we got Vegito. We got the Spirit Bomb Sword from Trunks. And the end of Zamas. And we also got the big reveal that Hit is coming back to Dragon Ball Super. So the episode as a whole, I gave it a 9.5. I thought it was really good, but the fact that the, the fusion didn't last that long, and it, it, it kind of felt like we wasted a fusion. Number two, the spirit bomb sword. Like, where did he learn this? Kind of like the explanation as to what this transformation that Trunks is in, this this... Saiyan aura, but there's like God key. Like, I'm almost thinking it's like a Super Saiyan demigod. That's what I'm thinking it is. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts and your comments. And, or let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Because I'm thinking it's like a demigod or like a Super Saiyan demigod. Kind of like Hercules was during like Greek mythology. I don't know. But the overall episode, the visuals, and, and the end of the story was, was really amazing, but what, what's up with this spirit bomb sword? And, like, somehow in this current timeline with the limited amount of people that's still left on the Earth, all that energy combined with Goku and Vegeta somehow was able to defeat him? I don't... I thought it was cool, don't get me wrong. I thought it was amazing, but I'm still kind of like... There's some things that just don't make sense, and hopefully, moving forward, we're going to get some more of an explanation. So, thank you for joining me on Titans of TV today. I'm your host, Spike Von Channel. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the shows this week, and let me know what you think is coming to our show. I'm Spike Von Channel, baby, and I'll see you next time.